Yes, uh, I want to greet everybody again. And uh, I was actually setting the, the mode of the class so that we can have a control of the public for it. So welcome to uh, the class of uh, genetics uh, 203-207, which is advanced genetics. And like uh, we have opened the class uh, during the test mode last week, I mentioned to you that uh, I will release the outline, which I have done, and I will quickly go through the outline as uh, it was released into the group so that we can all have a, uh, a brief overview of what we are going to be dealing with. And this very outline is actually a kind of a what was uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the old and the new curriculum of the uh, university. So we have introduction to advanced genetics one. Then we have biological cells in plant, animal, and microorganism. I deliberately put this this one into into the uh, course outline because we need to actually migrate from the basic to the advanced level, and that is the reason why I put uh, this uh, aspect. Then cell activities, nucleus, and chromosomal features. This is going to take us through uh, the basis of what we are going to learn in this in this course mostly, because all what we are going to be focusing on are uh, the cell, the chromosome, and the genes. So those are the three major components that we are going to be uh, focusing on, and that's the reason why I deliberately put, put this very uh, chromosome as a, a very important aspect of it and how cell activities are affecting it. And I put a long list of what we are going to be looking at under the chromosome. I put the types, I put the structure, I put the morphology, I put the number, I put organization, I put state of activities, I put comp composition, I put uh, function and special. We have special chromosomes, we are going to be talking about them. And after that one, we are going to also deal with the gene genetic characteristics which has to deal with the, the, the gene, the characteristics, the transmission and expression. This is also going to take us on a long journey to actually deal with it uh, uh, in this very course. Then we are going to have heritable and non heritable characteristics. This is uh, building on the, on the foundation of what we will have discussed. And of course, it's going to take us to quantitative and qualitative inheritance. Then we are going to take probability and test of goodness of fit uh, when we are talking about inheritance and trait in the transmission. Then we are going to look at the later part of it, which is a, a much more complex aspect of the very uh, course, which is genomes and genomic structure. Then we are going to look at the variations in, gen in, in genomic structures. Then we are going to deal with population genetics. Yes, these are how we are going to navigate in this uh, in this very course. And today, we are going to take the first two that I shared on that very outline, which is uh, the biological cells in plant, animal, and microorganism and cell activities, and how the cell activities is uh, uh, actually affecting chromosome uh, chromosome uh, orientation and structure. So to start with, we have said that uh, basically from the basic uh, biology, we have different types of cells and generally they categorize them on the different classes based on the reference of what we are talking about. We have the animal cell, we have the plant cell, and we have prokaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cell when we are talking about the living organism in the larger context of the, the the smaller or the basic cell and also the advanced organized cell and the rest like that. So uh, if we want to deal with different type of biological cells, that is how we are going to approach it. They are of different sizes and they are of different types and they carry out different functions. And a brief reference of it is to talk about when we are talking about the plant cells, we know the structure of the plant cell, the cell wall, the, the gauzy body, the tobacco, the everything. But we have this berry as it is structured. We have them specialized in different organs, in different tissues, 
in different systems within the whole organism. And that is the reason why it's very important to know this very different type of cells in animals, in plants, and in microorganisms. So in plants, let's start with the plants. We have parenchymal cells. And you know, I have told you that uh, your questions in this very, at this level is a uh, MCQ, that is optional. A, B, C, you pick one that is the correct answer. And that's the reason why this very particular discussion is very important. When we want to set, uh, set questions on the cells and the nucleus or chromosome, we need to have certain basic that uh, we are going to have different uh, perspectives to actually set the questions. So parenchyma cell. Parenchyma cell is a type of a plant cell. And parenchyma cell can be found in all the parts in all the parts of the plant, in the root, in the stem, and in the leaf. Just for example, if uh, there, is, there is a question that comes out there, in what part of the plant can we find parenchyma cell? You know, it is a, it's, it's not something that you can predict, like, okay, this is it. Unless you have known the function and you have come across this very information that is going to give you an idea of, okay, this is parenchyma cell, okay, these are the areas where you can find it within the plant. So, like I said, this very parenchyma cell is responsible for three major three major functions. Number one is photosynthesis. It takes part in the in the photosynthesis, it takes part in food storage, and it takes part in a wound healing. But like I said, it can be found in all the parts of the plant, the major part of the plant, the roots, the stem, and the leaves. Then the second one is a cholenchyma cell. Cholenchyma cells also can be found in a, just the leaves and the stem. The cholenchyma can be found in the stem and the leaves primarily and they provide mechanical support to the plant and also they protect the plants against uh, pests and diseases and that gives you that the parenchyma cell is, is actually supporting a protective cell so that is an idea if if you hear that okay a cell is protective and it is a supportive cell then you can find it only in the leaves and in the stem so that gives you an idea of what uh, the cell we are talking about is. Then we have sclerenchyma. Sclerenchyma cell also can be found in the stem and leaf regions because it is uh, providing a support and protection. And also we can have it that it is divided into two. We can have the cell uh, uh, part that is fiber and we can have the other type of it that is a scleris. So these are uh, sclerenchyma cells. Then we have meristem meristem cells or meristematic cell. From that very meristematic cell, you should know that uh, this is a cell that can be found in the root uh, in the root zone of the of the plant. And also it can be found in the tip of the bud or in the bud, in the bud and uh, the root tip of the of the plant. And these are responsible for cell division. These cells are responsible for cell division and formation of new cells. So that is the idea. Meristematic cell. Yes, question can come. Which of these very cells is responsible for this, the, the cell division or the formation of new cells within the plants? That is meristematic cell. Then we have epi, epidermal cell. Epidermal cell is the at, atomous layer of the plant uh, tissues. And of course, they prevent water loss and also prevent pathogens from attacking the plants. So these are also help in absorbing water and minerals. So these are epidermal cells. Another cell is a gas cell. The gas cell, even from the world guard, you know that they, this has to do with stomata. This has to do with the structure that is allowing the photosynthetic and the head opening and closing of the, the stomata. Uh, and that is a gas cell, and it is found in the leaf and also some other part of the stem. Because of course, we have certain openings that, uh, within, the, within the stem, uh, so, but it is majorly found in the leaf. And it's helped to regulate the water loss or the water entry and uh, also the exchange of gases within the plant. So that is uh, what the gas cell. Then we have xylem cells. Xylem cells. 
That's the conducting tissue within the plant, and that is located in the roots, in the stem, and in the leaf because they are conducting materials. If uh, they they are they are conducting materials like water and minerals from the soil into the uh, and uh, from the leaf into the uh, different part of the of the plants. Then we have the phloem cells. Phloem cell is also a conducting cell that is uh, actually conducting the nutrients from one part of the plant to another. And these are found in the stem and the leaf because they are conducting intermediarily within the stem and the leaf. That is where the phloem cells are actually uh, located. Then we have the root air cells. The root air cells are located in the root like it is a pronounced and they are responsible for absorbing water and mineral. You know, we have like a two uh, cells of the plant now that are actually conducting minerals and water. We have the root air cells and we have the xylem, uh, we have the xylem cells. And take note of that. Then, then we have the trichomes. Trichomes are actually cells. They are the out, outgrowth of the root air and they are found in the stem, in the leaf, and other plant organs that are having, that are hairy in nature. And this one are, pro, are protective cell, like a, a kind of adaptation that protect the plant against the attack or the invaders, uh, like a pest from uh, affecting the plants. And that is all we have under the the plant cells. Then let's move to the animal cells. You know, we have talked about the animal cells. You know, the general structure, the components, cytoplasm, nucleus, cell membrane, and the rest. But we have different cells that are actually differentiated and are performing different functions within the within the animal system. And we have epithelial cell in the on the list. Epithelial cell are in the skin and in the lining cavities and pathways of the animal. Wherever you, you can see a passage, the cell that is going to protect that very structure is called epithelial, epithelial cell. They are responsible for protection, absorption, and secretion. These are the major functions of uh, uh, the epithelial cell. Then we have the muscle cell. The muscle cell, you should know that uh, that is a uh, muscular system. So it is found in the muscular system and also uh, they are they are located within the skeleton and the cardiac. Any anywhere you can have tissue that is making the function of support or movement or uh, or regulation of a body alignment and the rest like that. That's where you can have the muscle cell because they are important cells or uh, part of the uh, animal system. Then we have the nerve cell. The nerve cell are found in the brain, in the spinal cord, and the and they are responsible for the coordination and transmission of signals from one part of the body into the other. So you know the central nervous system, the, all the nervous system. Uh, so the cells that are actually in charge of those system and the coordination of everything is a nerve cells. Then we have blood cells. The blood cell, you know them, the white blood cell, the red blood cell, and uh, the the rest of, of it that are within the circulatory system, the flowing of the blood and uh, the fluid that are associated with it. So these are found uh, carrying oxygen from one place to another, nutrients, uh, dilution, and also uh, fighting infection, as well, and also responsible for clotting. So these are the functions of uh, the, the blood cells. And you know, the red blood cells, the white blood cells, the platelets, and uh, the rest of them. Then we have the bone cell. The bone cells are actually what we can find within, within the skeletal system. And uh, you know the function. They are supporting, they are supporting uh, supportive uh, structure of the supporting structure of the animal system. Then ad adipose cells. Adipose cells, these are specifically for the storing of fats. Fats. You can you, you can you can take note of all these very important uh, uh, references. They they store fat and regulate energy and uh, osmotic uh, system or processes within the body system. That is a deep process. Then we have connecting tissue cell. Connecting tissue cell. You know that uh, these are the cartilages, the tendons, the ligaments, and the bones. 
they are part of the skeletal system and uh, uh, the major function of what they do is that they support then they resist stress and also they protect the different uh, parts of the body system of animals then we have the germ cell what is germ cell you should know that uh, we are talking about reproduction the germ cell are, are reproductive uh, organ uh, structures and they are responsible for reproduction then skin cells the, the skin cells they are the epidermis uh, skin uh, layer cells responsible for the protection responsible for the pigmentation preservation against pathogens sensation and even mechanical damage of the of the uh, of the tissues or of the structures that are actually protecting the human system or even the, the animal system generally then we have the glandular cell glandular cells are endocrine within the endocrine system where you have the endocrine exocrine glands yeah, you have the glands that are secreting hormones and also coordinating other substances that are related to hormones and uh, regulating the responses, the biochemical responses of the animal system. So these are the cells uh, that are, are very differentiated in different perspectives, in different functions, in different ways uh, within the plant and the uh, animal system so let's go to microorganism microorganism you know because they are not like eukaryotic cell that uh, we are eukaryotic organism or eukaryotic cell that uh, we can have in a uh, in a uh, major plants and uh, major animals we have this very one that are prokaryotic they are single cell unicellular so they are straightforward cell that you can have them uh, performing the function of what the organism is actually uh, trying to do bacteria cells you know bacteria cells they have a complete system that is controlling the life of a uh, bacteria. Then uh, we have the fungal cell. The fungal cell are also uh, uh, for the fungi system. They carry out the function of the what that very microorganism is all about. And you know, fungi can be uh, beneficial and can be harmful. Likewise, the bacteria. Then we have protein cell. Protein cell. Uh, they are the microorganisms that are uh, like an amoeba that are taking part within the ecosystem, within the body system of animals, the body system of plants. So we have different organisms that at that level. And uh, we have agar cells. Agar cells, this is agar. So you know, uh, it is a, a complete system of a microorganism. Then we have virus cells. Virus cell is a complete system on its own, carry out the functions of a virus. We have then we have the echia cell. Echia cells, they are environmental based, they are also uh, prokaryotic cells, and um, they can be found in, in their in their various world. What they normally do mostly is that uh, they do carry out some bio activities within the environment and within the body of the living organism. So these are just the overview of uh, when we are talking about the bi biological cells or living cells. This is the idea of the cell we are talking about, not the usual basic knowledge of the cells. Like we have the plant cell, we have the animal cell, we'll be comparing the structure and the, the rest of that. No, this is an advanced level of biological cells where we need to understand what are the different cells that we can find within the system of different living organisms and what are their functions and what are their activities. And that is what we, we just demonstrated. So let us advance to where we are actually going for today. And that is a cell, uh, cell activity, cell activity. You know, our uh, cells are carrying out different activity, uh, activities as an existing living, living unit. The major activity that uh, the cell are actually carrying out are uh, cell division. Cell division. Any cell that is not divided is, is a dead cell. That is as simple as it. Cell division is what makes the cells active. If you say a cell is active, that cell is carrying out or is undergoing cell division. And what is the fate of cell division? The cell division can be of two types. Number one, it can be mitosis. Number two, it will be meiosis. If you say a cell is active, it is not participating in mitosis or participating in meiosis. And what is mitosis? Mitosis is the 
multiplication of cells through the division of the uh, mother cell. I see we have a cell divided into two. We have the two cells divided into into the multiple of four. We have the the four cells divided into the multiple of eight. That like that to sixteen to thirty two to sixty four and then the rest like that. So that's multiplication. It's what we write as a mitosis because the fate of a cell is to divide into two, and all the materials that are constituted within the cell are going to be divided into two. But well, it is a long process that are uh, carried out in phases. We have the interface, we have the prophase, we have the uh, metaverse, we, we have the uh, we have the telophase. Because all these materials need to be to undergo such different processes and different at different stages before they can divide. Not that it is an instantaneous division. No. Though it is uh, happening at a very faster rate, but that very process of uh, HIFMAT, interface, prophase, metaverse, that will must be completed. And these are where the alignment of what is inside the nucleus and what is inside the cell are being re-engineered. And we are, we are coming to that because that is where we are actually going to. So we have the mitosis. The fate of mitosis can be in three different explanations or orientation. The first one, if the cell is uh, dividing, the number is increasing. That is a kind of a, what we call multiplication of cells. And when we have multiplication of cells, it can be cell elongation. When it is along the horizontal or, or along the longitudinal uh, orientation, cell elongation. It can be cell enlargement when it has no direction. It is multi-dimensional. We have cell enlargement. Then we have cell differentiation. That is when the cell that has been dividing, 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 assume a functional role within the system of biological uh, lifestyle. Uh, let me give you one example. When you have a fetus formation, like when you have the gamete of a uh, male, the gamete of the female come together to form a zygote and it is developing. It is not necessarily that uh, that very zygote is going to form into a baby. No. There will be cell division or cell division whereby the mass cell is going to be increased in number and that very mass cell is going to assume different structure. The face we form, the eyes we form, the nose we form, the teeth we form, the head we form, the leg we form, all the body system is going to form. Then that is when you have the cell elongation and cell enlargement. Then you can now have, when you have a baby, you can have now different functions. Okay, this is the way the eye is functioning. This is the way the nose is functioning. This is the way the hand is functioning. That is cell differentiation. So we have it in plants, we have it in animal. You know, in plants, we have, when you plant your seed, when you plant your, your seed, you are going to, first of all, have something that is going to point up. And that's the plumule and uh, the radical. That is a form of a cell elongation. Then when they are growing, growing, they, they will now assume different shapes of a stem, of a leaf, or fruit, or something. That's when you now have cell elongation, cell enlargement as they are growing, and cell differentiation when they started performing different roles. So that is the way the fate of mitosis is can be understood when you are talking about cell activities. But the other phase of a, a cell division is a my, meiosis. Meiosis is, is for the development and the reproduction. Meiosis is, to, is for the purpose of reproduction. And when we're talking about the reproduction, it is a complex, it is a complex uh, process that involves two series of stages or two series of cycles. We have the meiosis one, then we have the meiosis two. Meiosis one is similar to mitosis. Meiosis two is similar to mitosis. But what is differentiating the meiosis from a mitosis is that uh, instead of having a cell divided into two, we are going to have a cell divided into two with the constituent of the genetic material interchange or crossing over or mixing together or randomly combined. Because we, we are having different set of 
are cells and gametes coming together to mix their materials. The male material, the female material, they are coming together. Not like just only one single material in the mitosis. So this is where the complexity of the reproduction, meiotic reproductive uh, uh, process come into explanation. And that is what led to variation of what we are seeing as in variation, varieties, differences in living organisms. It is due to meiosis. So in the meiosis one, we are going to have two daughter cells produced. And in the meiosis two, we are going to have four daughter cells produced. So that is the fate of a uh, meiosis. We are going to have details account of uh, uh, the, the mitosis, the meiosis, and uh, uh, the rest of that in your, in your lecture notes. But where we are actually going to is that what happens to a chromosome? What, has, what happens to nucleus? Because that is our area of interest in genetics. What happens to nucleus? What happens to chromosome? What happens to genes when these cell activities are being carried on? or are ongoing. That is where our interest in. Now, one of the striking points to make during the cell division, either mitosis or meiosis, is that uh, the materials within the nucleus, the materials of the genes or on the chromosome are actually mixing together and recombining. There can be error. And that is where genetics come to play. What is happening within the nucleus and the chromosome when cell division is ongoing? That is where we are actually going to. The major thing that is happening to nucleus when cell is active is replication. Replication, recombination. Those are the two things that are actually happening. Replication and recombination. What is replication? Replication is that... Uh, that very chain of a chromosome with the gene that are aligned in the sequence on that chain, they are replicating, they are duplicating themselves. They are duplicating themselves. That is replication. And in that very replication, it is a long process as well. So there can be mistake due to the reactions that are involved, due to the external effect of the environment that are involved due to some other biochemical reaction within the cell that can occur. There can be mistake, error. Possibly, there can be a misread of the sequence of the gene. If a sequence of this gene is supposed to read A, A, T, C, G, G, it can be read in the reverse order because the process is somehow spontaneous and somehow directional and anti-directional anti with different factors interplay at the same time, at a faster speed. So there can be error in the reading of the genetic code or in the, in, in the gene, and there can be error in the recombination of the chromosome itself. Because during the process of uh, my, uh, mitosis and, um, and uh, meiosis, the strand of the chromosome are going to be separated several times separated to the polar, separated at the middle, then recombine to now divide into different cells, daughter cells. So this is the first phase. The activity that is happening to the chromosome is that they are replicating and they are recombining. But in the process, there can be error. That very error is an important factor that uh, we need to look into in the later discussion. Then apart from that very one, the recombination and the replication is what gives to differences in what becomes the output of that process. You cannot get the same product when you are having different recombination of materials in reproduction. You cannot have exact. That's why anything that comes out of a reproduction cannot be the same thing as the parent. Yes, there can be a high level of similarities to the poor contributing parents, but there cannot be exact copy. Uh, it is because of recombination. Replication, it has its own effect. There can be misread because of errors. Then the recombination is going to create differences in what becomes the output of it. So take note of these very two important uh, 
important uh, aspect. So now, when after mentioning that, we are now going to look at what is the status of a chromosome even at that level of a, uh, the cell activity. What is the what is the status? What is the features? What are the features of a of a chromosome during this very active stage? When cell is not dividing, when cell is at rest phase, which is not usual, when cell is at rest phase, what inside the nucleus is not chromosome? It is called chromatin. Take note. When cell is at resting phase, what is happening inside the nucleus? What you are having there, that part inside that very nucleus, is not chromosome. It is called chromatin. Chromatin is the long chain of a DNA with proteins. The protein, we have different types of them, but histone is the common name that they call it. Because the histone protein is what actually protects the DNA, uh, the DNA capsule or the DNA chain from a mechanical damage or the, to also preserve it. So chromatin is what we call the strand of DNA when cell is not, not active or is at resting phase. That is the interface under the uh, mitosis and under, under, the, under the meiosis. Interface. So when cell has started activities, division, replication, re recombination, it is then that we now have chromosome. So we, we have the chain of DNA as chromatin. Then we have the chain of DNA as chromosome. So what is chromosome? We should be able to define what chromosome is, not missing where we call it chromatin and where we call it chromosome. And this very chromosome, yes, it can it can it can assume two different forms. It can assume two different forms. We have heterochromatin. Heterochromatin of a chromatin when the cell is at the resting phase is when we have the DNA tightly packed and not assuming any coding sequence. We are not calling any sequence of that very DNA gene. No. It is tightly packed. We cannot differentiate between among the strands, among the segments of the DNA. That is when we, we have heterochromatin. They are not dividing stage. They are tightly packed and condensed. And when it is stained under the experiment, it is it appears dark stain under the microscope. Dark stain. Because if a, a question is coming as an MCQ, just say, what is the name of that very DNA, DNA structure that has zoomed dark stain status under the microscope? That is heterochromatin. Then the, the, the second aspect of a chromatin is a euchromatin. Euchromatin is when the cell is beginning to assume the activity. Then it is less dense and it is loosely packed. Then it appears light stain under the microscope. So it appears light stain under the microscope. Then we can have the some level of gene expression that is we can actually de uh, define certain segments of the DNA as gene, the DNA chain as gene. We can actually define some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, segment of the DNA chain as gene. So until when we now have the the clearly defined chromosome where you can have the non-coding region that is uh, not gene uh, a region of the DNA, then you can have the coding region that we call the gene on the on the DNA chain. And that is what uh, uh, we, we are here to understand today. And uh, yes, for a recap, it's very important that uh, we understand that a cell is not the common cell as we see them in the basic biology. Cell has different 
functions, different structures, and different parts of the body that we can find them. That exists in plants, that exists in animals. And also, the other aspect in the microorganism is that because they are prokaryotic, they are unicellular, they assume the function of the organism. They assume the function of the organism. The cell of the microorganism, they assume the function of the organism. If it is beneficial, they perform the beneficial function of the organism. That is microorganism. For example, if uh, you have an organism like uh, some of the bacteria that are and uh, fungi that are uh, biodegradation, that they break down the complex material into the simpler forms in the environment. So they are going to assume that very that very characteristic. And those ones that are causing diseases, they are going to assume that very characteristic as their cell function. As their cell function. So I have mentioned some of the examples. Take note of them, uh, and actually you are going to see them in your lecture notes. Then we advance to cell activities. We say that uh, cell activities are, are actually major one, uh, a major, a majorly two. We have the cell division, uh, which is a uh, the mitosis. We have the cell division, which is a uh, meiosis. The fate of a uh, mitosis are uh, to multiply the cell. And, of, and they make copies of the original cell. Of course, this is a similar cell because there is no exchange of material. It is not a cell that is multiplying. And the fate of that is to give effect on the organism, cell elongation, cell enlargement, and cell differentiation. I made example of how cell differentiation came to be in a different part of the animals. And I made example of that uh, in the in plants, in different parts of the plants. And I... I also make reference to uh, the microorganism of it. And the second one that we call meiosis. We say the fate of meiosis is, is uh, actually to reproduce. And during the reproduction, it is a long chain process that follows phase by phase. And during the phase, there are two things that are actually happening to the chromosome, because that is where our interest is. The chromosome is uh, actually replicating. Multiplying is a is a copies. Then recombining, oh, combining. Yes, recombining and combining, combining different segments together to form a new chain of a DNA. That is what is happening, and that is the phase that is defining the variety, the differentiation, the variation in living organisms. And I said that the fate of replication is that uh, if it is correctly arranged, then we have a perfect match of a. Uh, a chain of a DNA.